Hey everyone, Rogue Gold here, and today we're back to talk about a Division Heartland topic. If you watched my previous video, this is a bit of a spinoff from that. In that sense, I want to discuss one of the positive outcomes that I believe will occur if this game does indeed launch in the March of 2022 time slot as I predicted. And that is that Heartland and the team at Red Storm have a real chance to learn from one of the big mistakes of the Division 2 if they're not already actively doing so. So let's dive into it. Now the big mistake that I mentioned that I believe Division 2 committed was a lack of time set aside for for feedback and implementation, right? Division 2 made some incredibly massive changes to the core and fundamentals of Division PvP. Some of that was proactive on behalf of Red Storm to try and create a more you know, fair playing field, as they often touted, and some was reactionary to the overall design changes that Massive made to movement, animations, gear, skills, that stuff that was made for the overall game that just had to be part of PvP now because that's obviously a part of the same game. As I've talked about before, I think one of Red Storm's biggest mistakes was thinking that Rogue 2.0 in the Division's 1.8 update was a good indicator of how people would react to and receive Division 2's PvP, because if you look back, they just implemented exactly what was coming in Division 2 in, Ro in uh, Rogue 2.0, right? They did flagging to go rogue. They had the same manhunt ranks, the clear stations, all of that stuff. And I would unquestionably bet that instead of the primary goal of that being to fix the Division 1's DZ and PvP systems like they said, it was actually to test and gauge how these changes might go over in the Division 2. And I think a big failure in that test was the assumption of thinking it would be a one-to-one -one comparison. Because Rogue 2.0 and Division 1 and PvP in the Division 2 are wildly different things. And that's because of those factors I laid out. Things like the differences in movement, healing, time to kill, gear, skills, everything. And so if you'll recall, the first time they went out and got some actual substantial feedback on what they'd been working on for so long was only like four-ish months from release. Three months realistically from when it would need to be done for the, uh, the open beta. And that was in November, December of 2018 when they invited a lot of streamers and content creators to Massive and to Red Storm. I don't actually remember where the on-site location was, but to try this stuff out. And it was a very clever marketing tactic, right? Like, I remember at the time anxiously awaiting Marco Styles' videos back when he was a bit of a better guy for the community. He split the breakdowns into, I think, I want to say four or five videos, and it was so much fun waiting and finally watching all of those because we were just getting so much information about Division 2 that we previously hadn't had. But in the world of development, three months is not enough time to make substantial change if you receive poor feedback. I remember the general sentiment from Marco and Wids' videos being... You know, this is interesting. Some stuff is good. Some stuff is more questionable. And I think I just remember the whole community feeling a bit uneasy, but unable to fully admit that. Like, I think we all saw the stuff that we didn't like, but at the same time, we were in a bit of denial for admitting that because we're all like, it's Division 2, it's going to be great. And ultimately, we saw where that went. So whatever feedback was given to Red Storm, nothing substantially changed from the point of those early access videos dropping in January to the release in March. And thus, we were stuck with a very flawed system, and to an extent, we still are today. So, shifting things over to Heartland, this is where I think they have a big opportunity to correct that mistake, and I think Red Storm is likely aware of this opportunity and is already taking advantage of it. When this thing was first announced in May and they said that there would be immediate testing going on, as I said in my last video, I was like, oh, this is dropping soon, like in the next few months, because that's just the trend that we were used to. But if you compare where we're at now to that Division 2 DZ feedback period, it's already been three months since that Heartland testing, and we're no closer to an idea of the release than we were back then. Given how little has happened, we're at least still a few months from release, if not March of 2022, like I previously predicted. And so what does this mean? It means that Red Storm has the actual breathing room and the chance to make some considerable substantial changes to the game based off of feedback they got in that test, and they'll continue to get that in future ones. When they said testing was beginning, I was honestly very surprised, because it seemed really early considering Ubisoft gave the game a release window of up until the end of fiscal year 2021, which is March of 2022, and so as soon as they said testing, Testing was going to include random people, so to say, from the community, I pretty much knew that leaks were going to happen. But I think ultimately, Redstorm recognized their fault in Division 2's development and made the sacrifice of scrutiny and leaks in order to hopefully end up with a better final product. Because if they do wait until March of 2022 to release, that's a long time of feedback and implementation from May of 2021. Because as someone who may or may not have been included in some totally top secret but not so secret testing, this gives me a lot of faith that the Division Heartland is going to end up being something the community can rally behind and enjoy. Again, I don't have proof that this testing schedule is a direct result from the lessons from the Division 2, but I think if you look at the patterns and you think about who's behind the wheel on this project, I think you can begin to see what's going on here. And if nothing else, this raises my excitement for the Division Heartland and my faith in Red Storm that much more. Thank you all so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and be sure to subscribe with notifications 
notifications on so you can be updated every time I upload. Let me know your thoughts about the ongoing situation with The Division Heartland. Do you think that the early testing will ultimately end up being beneficial for the game, or do you think that the long periods of silence we've gotten so far have been a little detrimental to the hype? I'm curious to gauge what people's thoughts are on this one, because I'm certainly very much anticipating Heartland and more news on it, and I would hope that a good amount of the community is as well. All right, everyone, well, I think that is going to do it for this one. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and until the next one, guys, Rogue Gold, out.